Well, let's speak to Fawaz Georges, who is the director of the Middle East Centre at the London School of Economics, and uh, that's where he's uh, live for us uh, tonight. Uh, Fawaz, first of all, let's talk about that press conference um, because the rhetoric has been dialed up. Uh, the, the spokesperson for the uh, interim president there talking about terrorism, talking about uh, extremism and a war of attrition. Well, I mean, uh, the rhetoric is, is extremely, uh, I mean, uh, potent. Uh, it's not just extremism, it's religious fascism, uh, a term that's really almost borrowed from the American war on terror. Remember the terms after 9-11. Uh, Islamic fascism and uh, 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 Egypt is facing an existential uh, uh, a struggle. Um, uh, it's a war on terror. It's a national security threat. Uh, all these terms tell me that we're going to witness more escalation, that the Egyptian government is basically positioning the Egyptian public for a prolonged war against uh, not just the Muslim Brotherhood but the Islamists. I think what you're going to see is a widespread purge uh, further escalation and crackdown against the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, not only uh, some Muslim uh, Brotherhood leaders have been arrested, most of the leadership now is basically in hiding and uh, being pursued by the Egyptian authorities. Uh, uh, the reality is uh, what you're seeing in Egypt is that both camps, not just the Egyptian government, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood are basically uh, uh, waging uh, uh, what they view as, as uh, a life and death, a struggle. This is not just about politics. This is not about sharing uh, power in Egypt. It's about the future identity of the Egyptian state. And neither camp seems to be willing to basically make concessions. I uh, also and, believe and in fact, the interim myself. government is saying that it's looking into ways of dissolving the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, is, is that a possibility? And what reaction would that have? Well, uh, uh, the spokesperson for the Egyptian government says that the, the goal is not to dissolve the Muslim Brotherhood, but the, to limit and basically to uh, really uh, undermine the ability of the Muslim Brotherhood to mobilize its followers. But they, they boil down to the same thing. I think, and I, I could be wrong, a decision has been made by the military-backed government to break the backbone of the Muslim Brotherhood, to crush the Muslim Brotherhood to exclude the Muslim Brotherhood as an organization. I'm not talking about some, uh, some members of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, I also think uh, the Muslim Brotherhood is taking very, very high risk. The very future, political future, of the Muslim Brotherhood is online. Its back is to the wall. I don't think the Egyptian government or any government can cleanse Egypt out of the Muslim Brotherhood. Remember, this is one of the most powerful social and political movement. It numbers in the millions. It won more than 40 percent of parliamentary seat. This movement was born in 1928. Uh, I mean, it thrives under persecution. Uh, remember, it was persecuted for most of its uh, uh, life. Uh, but the reality is, I think the Muslim Brotherhood will face the brunt of the security and military apparatus in Egypt. And also what, what changes, qualitatively changes the political scene is that there is a sizable number of Egyptians who are opposed to the Muslim Brotherhood. And the, the Egyptian government, I would argue, the military and the security apparatus would not have been able to do what they have done in the last few weeks without the existence of a sizable number of Egyptians who support the military government. Egypt is truly polarized. And that's the, the problem, isn't on the it? One hand. Because you, you can't go forward with a political process and simply ignore that section of the country who voted for Mohamed Morsi. Th that, is, that is the reality. Regardless of what we think, you and I and all of us, the reality is you cannot exclude, you cannot say uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and the Islamists will not be part of the political process. Uh, this is, let's say they represent 30%. Forget about the 40 and 50 percent. Not only this would represent a hard blow to democratization, it would basically uh, undermine the legitimacy of the ballot box. Uh, remember, this is a fragile democracy in Egypt. And I know that many Egyptians, many of my friends, basically feel very strongly about the Muslim Brotherhood. But the reality is the Muslim Brotherhood is an integral part of the social and political uh, uh, scene in Egypt. And ways and means must be found to renew the political process. There is no way in Egypt except for a political uh, dialogue between the both camps. And the problem is here, there is no third neutral force in Egypt. 
The country is deeply polarized. That's why the need for international community to come in, to bridge the divide, the deep and wide well, divide just, that just exists in Egypt. Just on the subject oh. of the international community, when, you know, when we heard the, uh, uh, the, um, the Hagazi, the presidential spokesman, talking about extremists and um, uh, terrorists, was that, uh, was that basically aimed at the international community to try and uh, justify the army response as this being some kind of security situation uh, and, and a legitimate response to that? I mean, there are two points. You're asking a very important question. I think uh, Mr. Hijazi's argument was that the international community does not understand Egypt. All of us, we don't really see what's happening on the ground. Uh, he basically was very critical, the Egyptian government, not only of Western government, but also of the Western media, all of us who basically pontificate about Egypt. And I think the reality is, and this is what the Egyptian government it does not appreciate, the world cannot understand the killing of more than 800 people and the injury of thousands of people. This, the reality is, even if you say there were some violent members of the Muslim Brotherhood and Islamists who use violence, you cannot collectively punish tens of thousands of people. This reality, the Egyptian government has already lost the argument internationally. They don't seem to grasp this particular fact. With all my respect, not only, not only the Americans and the Brits and the French, where I'm sitting, and, and CNN and Al Jazeera and BBC and all of it, the reality is once you use excessive force, regardless of your justification, you lose the international community. Um, and the reality is, you asked me directly now to your question, the international community does not buy the argument that Egypt is facing a war on terror. I mean, the Americans, the European Union, uh, the, in, the United Nations view this particular struggle as a political struggle between two uh, segments of Egyptians, one nationalist secular segment and one Islamist segment. And the reality is, if this is, a reading is correct, there is no military solution for okay. this, what I call polarized political society in Egypt. Faraz, good to get your thoughts there on a very complex situation. Faraz Jurgis speaking to us live from London there.